So, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Darren Pritchard, and I'm 23 years of age. <laughs> so, tell me, Darren, how did you get into the whole Vogan thing? How I got into the old Vogan thing was I've got a very good friend called Darren Suarez, who was an original Vogan mm -hmm. in the 80s when it first blew up. He was in a house called the House of Banjo Realness with okay. some drag queens and some kind of club kids and they were kind of disenfranchised working class Liverpoolians so they related with the whole Paris is burning mm -hmm. um, kind of aesthetic and kind of freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. Then he laid it dormant for a while and he came to work for me as a contemporary dance teacher and I knew that he vogued and I was like and I said to him oh Darren show Donna vogued and when he vogues he just comes to mm -hmm. life yeah. and, he's, and he's an old way voguer and because he understands the culture and the style he's he looks beautiful when he vogues. So what happened is I said to him, Darren, why don't you start fusing your vogue with some contemporary dance? So we tried that, um, then he got a commission to do a piece called uh, Liverpool is Burning, based okay. on the uh, whole Paris is Burning thing. And that's when I had my first taste of vogue. Um, yeah. And this was in around, I think it was 2008, nine. Okay. Yeah, I was, no, it was, I think it was earlier than that. I'm not quite sure of the year. And then um, I'd, I'd seen it because I grew up with it, but I wasn't kind of a practitioner because yeah. I wanted to practice with him Manchester. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, he then, then me and him kind of um, was, we enjoyed the contemporary fruit fusion and then we was like, we feel like we need to establish the Vogue aesthetic authentically as it is mm -hmm. without fusing it first. Yeah. And then fusing it so I've been kind of um he formed a house of Suarez and I was his kind of lead kind of daughter of yeah. his house. And then we did our first folk bar with Ducky in Home Tokyo which was amazing. And then we've been kind of funding and fundraising ever since to hold an annual folk ball and that's been fantastic because it's grown every year. And when was the first Suarez ball? First Suarez ball was it would have been two years ago. I, I have to tell you by the name. So we've got, we had um, Twisted Fairy Tales last year. The year before that, we had Jedi yeah. Glitter. Yeah. Then the year before that was the first Vogue Bar, yeah. which was the House of Suarez Vogue Bar. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what, like, I mean, that's quite good because it explains both Voguing and how you got into Suarez. Yeah. What does Voguing mean for you personally? Personally, it was a style that on, I think, every possible level that I attached to, being a kind of working class gay male, mm. it, I understood the culture, for one, being kind of, being brought up in a black community, mm -hmm. and knowing how, why them guys had to go underground, and the um, West Indian society is very much macho, and yes. a lot more blatantly homophobic than the West, like there mm. is songs that actually promote killing gay people, mm -hmm. which you wouldn't necessarily get here. Well you do, but they wouldn't be kind of inbred in the whole culture and hitting the charts. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I understood it on that level. For one, it was a dance form, and I love to dance, it's yeah. what I feel I was born to do. And also, it embraced my sexuality, whereas other art forms such as contemporary dance don't necessarily do that. You're either a blank canvas for a choreographer, mm -hmm. or you're acting a role, or you're expressing it. Vogue is about... It came from the underground gay scene, yeah. so I think that's why I kind of took to it and became kind of obsessed with it, and mm. yeah, yeah. just... Um, you're from... Well, you're... The Suarez Ball is in Liverpool, but yeah. you're from Manchester. I'm going to move over here. Yeah. Um, Suarez Ball is in Liverpool, but you're from Manchester. Yeah. How is the Vogue scene here? How's the Vogue scene here? It's almost non existent here. I think here what we've got a lot of is very good drag queens. The drag, because the drag and Vogue culture, because it Evo the Vogue culture evolved from the drag bar. So mm. the drag queens here understand the Vogue, Vogue culture. I think we've got a lot of club kids now that are embracing it. Mm -hmm. Musically, I think we're better here because we've got Drunk Up Vogue, we've got kind of Bollocks, <coughs> we've got Tranny King, mm -hmm. we've got, um, we've got Cha Cha Brood right now. So it's kind of like you've got all these events that mm -hmm. are kind of celebrating the drag yeah. and 
um, club culture, but what is missing is the dance. Yeah. And um, so I think that's where Manchester's got the edge. It is, it's a club city, so, mm. so the club kids, and we've got the gay village. Yeah. So there's a growing audience for it in Manchester, and it has got a following. But dance-wise, I think it's just happening in Liverpool, because Dan's yeah. bass there, and he teaches at Lipper, and he teaches all these people, so he's known as Mr. Vogue. And then I'm known as a Vogue over there in Liverpool, mm. so I think, um, I think it's growing, I think it's slowly growing, and I think the time that we're in, in this time of austerity and kind of political kind of regressionness back mm. to the 80s with the Conservatives we've got, we've got now, is very reflective of the 80s. Mm. So what people do is a lot of people kind of conform, but then a lot of other people go, I need colour, mm. I need verb. And gay people, intrinsically, the gay scene, the quite political, is quite homogenised, and gay boys are trying to be straight, and straight boys are trying to be gay, mm. and this whole metrosexuality that's going on, and there isn't an embracingness of a gay culture and being camp, so to speak, yeah. being flamboyant, dressing up, cross-dressing, celebrating transgender, gay music, gay fashion, that's all kind of frowned upon. We've got this kind of religion-esque um, kind of clothes wearing, certain hairstyle, homogenised gay yeah. scene, yeah. and anything else is sneered on, and I think there's this kind of fighting underground rebelness going, no, bring out the sissy boys and the faggots and the freaks and yeah, yeah. those that want to wear heels because I've been out many a times and it's sneered upon and I was like, this is our culture. When, yeah. when, when there was just New Uni and Dickens and something else and it was the drag queens, the prostitutes, the hustlers and the mm. pimps. When my mum was going out, because mm. she told me all this because she was on the scene then she was, it was like, we had like drag queens living with us when we were younger. Mm -hmm. So... And, <laughs> yeah, you're fabulous. Yeah, I'm fabulous. Yeah, had good fashion sense and makeup tips. Like very engaged. Yeah, so um, I think I think there's an underground scene that is growing, and it is great because I think it is growing, mm -hmm. and people are coming out yeah, yeah. of the kind of closet. So the flamboyance closet, mm. and um, that happened in Liverpool with the Vogue Bar because there's people that walk in the ball and there was like just under 600 people in the last one and I was like, where are these people coming from? Yeah. And people that were even walked and we had, we had rockers, we had burlesque people, we had, we had punks, we had, mm -hmm. we had alternative, we had kind of very fashion conscious, stylistic, muscle marys, leather queens and I was just like, you don't see that hybridity no more, that people coming together because it's like, those people are at Rembrandt. Yeah. These people go to Eagle, these people go to Tranicate, and that's what I liked about the Vogue Bar, but I think it's slowly kind of growing mm. as a show-off, so kind of yeah, yeah. riding the long barges against on the canal during Pride. <laughs> <laughs> so, you were on TV recently. Yes, I was on Got To Dance. How, yeah. how did that happen? How did you get on there? What happened was they phoned, and I was originally going to put two girls forward and what happened is I came to meet them at the audition and I told no one I was going to audition so I had my music ready to, um, ready to audition and they never showed up so I auditioned and then straight away they latched onto it because yeah. they, they never ever had anyone as who came in and said they was a puristic vulgar mm. so they asked me a lot of questions about what is vogue, what is a house um, the connection, everyone connects it with Madonna. Um, mm. What was the connection with Madonna? So I auditioned here, I auditioned at the dance house, um, and then the producers um, phoned me, and I wasn't going to tell anyone until I got on television, because mm -hmm. I was like, if we auditioned and I didn't get through, I just feel yeah, yeah, But ego, I'm an artist, I've yeah, got ego, yeah. I, just, I just feel shame. So I got through, and then I wasn't going to tell anyone until I got on to television, but then the producers phoned me, because we'd like to film you, mm -hmm. we'd like to come to your house, speak to your mom. No, ask a lot more about folks, so they film me in my bedroom, this, doing this, doing that. Then I went down and auditioned on the, it was a Sunday, and it was kind of second to last done, and, um, because I had the whole build-up. So the most exciting thing was I was looking forward to meeting Davina more than any, <laughs> anything else. I could have went home after I'd met her. So I kind of went on, and... It was really weird because I walked on stage and I thought, what the fuck am I doing? Are these people going to get it mm. and understand it and realise what I'm trying to do? And I deliberately went, and people don't, because people were like, because they were like, oh, you're going to dress up? And I thought, 
No, I'm not going to dress up. What I'm going to do is show the art form first mm. in its purest form. And he actually went in a pinstripe suit because that executive realness because mm. I meant business. Yeah, yeah. That's what, and then because people were like, why did you dress up? And I was like, I was in my suit. It was like yeah, executive well, realness. Yeah, yeah. And I said, and I had the gloves and I told them that the glamour and the flamboyant. But I said, first of all, I wanted to be appreciated as a puristic dance art form. I can do the heels and the glam and the mm. demi drag. I said, I don't mind doing that, it's part of the culture. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah, I kind of thought, what the hell am I doing as a watch on stage? And I was like, it re I didn't have no regrets up until then. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I should have just went with a nice lyrical contemporary priest and rolled around on the floor and made them cry. <laughs> and then I was like, and then I thought, and then, and then, as, and then I was like, no, this was like, oh, the last one now. So run around. Is it a movement yeah. thing? Yeah. Oh. And then, um, so. So then I did it, and then... It went down really well. It did, but what you do, what you don't see is that they make you wait ages. Right, okay. You know, like, on television, like, the three stars yeah. just pop up. Yeah. They make you wait ages. So I'm stood there. I knew from when I did the first... Yeah. You know, I did the first... They went... Whoa, whoa they yeah, went... Yeah. Right, but and then I got... I got the free start and you know what? They was really, really lovely, and I couldn't mm. have asked for a better reception or a better kind of platform mm. to do it on. They was understanding. They knew what. Even though I didn't get through to the next stage, they understood what it was. Mm -hmm. And actually, it was um, Ashley. He said the most, but they didn't edit a lot in. He was yeah. like, "You're a true artist. They understood the purest." Mm -hmm. He go, he go, he goes. What you was doing necessarily wasn't the most difficult thing, but it was the way you did it in the style. Mm -hmm. And they've never ever had a vulgar on. Yeah, the yeah, television yeah. program. I'd be very surprised if they do. They had rappers that year who did yeah. get shown and stuff, but they never had a vulgar. And they said the, what they kept saying is, "You're authentic. Mm. You can tell. You live the life. You know the culture of it. Yeah, that yeah. just don't kind of play on it." So yeah, it went down an absolute storm. And then I went and I'd still never told nobody. And then I watched it on television, and there was kind of like, because you never know how anything's going to go down. Then my Facebook blew yeah, up, yeah, like yeah, yeah. it exploded. Like people that I didn't even know knew I kind of danced or knew what I really did, and they was like, "Oh my god, it's amazing! Well done!" I worked, walked into Buzz Rocks, which is kind of a West Indian food shop, and they uh -huh. was like, "Oh my god, you're that guy!" Of, <laughs> he goes, "You're doing the vote thing, weren't you?" And it was kind of like, "Yeah." yeah. Then um, also when it was, uh, I was, I was stood up. Um, I went into a clothes shop, this was the other week, and this guy yeah. was like, excuse me, can I ask you was, um, did you? <laughs> These are the outtakes. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, he was like, can I ask you, was you on a television program and did you vogue? And he's like, oh my God, you're vogue, sick. Then I was stood crossing the road and this guy's staring at me. And these are all straight males, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. really weird. And they're like, oh my God, I've never seen anyone vogue like that. I didn't yeah, know yeah. that's what it was. So reception-wise, it did go down an absolute kind of storm. And after that, kind of, it's kind of, um, I don't, I've got a couple, I've had a couple of workshops and kind of interest. But for me, um, stuff like that, and I think vogue will be a quite, it's still a slow burn. So I think so people really kind of mm. get on it. Then, yeah. Then it's got it's got a good few. I think it's like thirteen thousand hits on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, and that. So, so it's kind of out there, and people know what it is, and they associate me with it. And to be honest, that was the only reason I went on it because I do lots of other styles, mm. and I, I said. I want to go out there and promote Vogue and promote essentially a part that is me and yeah, is yeah. very spiritually connected to what I am mm. as all as me. I just want to struggle out with mm. it. And they also wanted to get on Britain's and Ireland's next top model because it's the same company. So <laughs> and they produced it and I was thinking, wait, Benny Ninja does it and the ninjas do it for oh, Tyra. Yeah, yeah. I was like, why can't I do it for Sky? And I was, yeah, like, yeah. I was like, maybe put it out there. I'll I maybe emailed Got so your hustle music. on. Yeah, yeah, I got my yeah. hustle on. I, I was wearing my suit, I remember this dress, yeah. <laughs> cool, yeah. that's awesome. I think that'll be that'll be enough.